Chairman. I know we've got a lot of um, other matters on our agenda right now, but the matter of the school assessments update, which gets raised out in our rural communities, and it just says, you know, it's um, a schedule and it's progressing, but we really, it says it's due in August. We really do need to get it to happen because I believe we want to make all of those provisional changes at the same time rather than making applications in a drip-fed way. So we've been telling our communities at community meetings that we were doing this work. So is it still going to meet in August reporting? Through the chair, yes, that's the best date that we can get to with the prioritisation and the work that we're tasked with by the committee at the last meeting. Thank you. Right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. <coughs> Right, leave of absence, no more time for leave of absence. Acknowledgement and tributes, none of those. Public petitions. So at this stage, because the people from Downers are here, I might ask them to, if you'd like to come up and use this space to, to do your presentation. So if I can just introduce the team and the reason for this. It's because in light of the events of the last couple of weeks, we thought we'd take this opportunity to show the committee how it is that we're managing the network in this space and the technology that we're using in order for us to actually manage the contractors, the volume of work and everything that's going on. So I think the committee's met Sandy Farr from Downers before and Paul Grant who's driving things in the background there. So I'll hand over to you guys. But sorry, Sandy, you can stand there and wipe some <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for having us along just to show you briefly what we're doing. Obviously, we are in a, a bit of a large event here with the second march of rain that's come through. We typically use a RAM contractor tool for our job management system. Um, for this event, we're using it in twofold. So we're using RAM contractor, which is a mobile tool that our field staff all use, coupled with mobile roads, which means that all of our subcontractors can also use that. What that does is it puts it all into a GIS platform. So from here we can map the current condition of the network. So from the first event we only had 130, road, 130 kilometres of roading closed. When the second lot came through that increased to 590 kilometres of roads closed. We have opened over half of them. So what you can see here is all of the red are the roads that are still closed. All the orange are roads that are accessible but under caution and all of the green are the roads that were closed that are now reopened. Uh, we assess the majority of the network. There is a portion where we're still currently doing a flyover to get to uh, areas of the network where we cannot physically touch it. So that is in the Tauhati Fernside and Mungia Mata area. Um, by this afternoon, we'll have all of that mapped, photographs, and the scale of the event out there within the system so then we can use that as our planning tool. That's the basis of where we target resources from here. You can say you're doing flyovers with this. Uh, all of the blue dots there are examples of where we've recorded faults um, where we've got major defects. So the ability with this is our guys on the ground to start the event, they can come up with some cost estimates, they can take photographs of what's happened. Back in the office we can bring up the detail here. Uh, so this one is Convey seen this last night from one of Helen's communications. Power pole's the other side of the bank. Um, that has now moved further back, and you can see the lines are still there <coughs> going across the road. So, we also work with the Eastern Network to maintain access or get access to these roads so that they can remain safe for our members. Any questions? Has the study of service completed? Yep, Sean, so here uh, we've got all of our resources that we're using. Uh, all over the map there. So wherever we've got crews working, we've got them all plotted on the screen there. So that works for two ways. That shows it's a, a health and safety measure so we can see where we have people and that also allows us to contact the nearest resource as we get new information come through. So instead of us sending resource to an area we've already got people, we can just look quickly at the map and contact them directly. And just expand just on one row so you can see where we've got subcontractors in the whole oh, fire, yeah. and then you can show just who we've got there. So you can see there quite quickly. Um, yeah. Wiggins Bridge, Stone Home Slip, Harakihi Road, all of that's quite hard, so that's where we've got a lot of resource currently. 
And that road going up the middle is a car wall, which is, isn't it weird? Council went the other day. That can cover bits of snow the underlying is coming off. That's Carwell Road there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then Manukukara off to the left, which is the one where the um, people were evacuated from the house. So how far up that road did we go, okay? Did we come to the red line? We, we joined it off the yellow at the top. See where the little red joins the yellow below the sign? We joined it there and we came out. And put the bottom of the spot of ribbon through and then came out the bottom of the line. The point of it is um, so the ribbon from the road. So bring up that shot. So you, you can see from Wiggins, we originally had it clear if you go to the Lemon Festival. It was Monday night, so everyone saw the detritus all over the bridge, the whole bridge was covered. That was Monday night, that was Tuesday at around lunchtime. <laughs> a little bit heartbreaking for our crew out there, but um, um, this got us here again. And we removed the, con the container out of the front line? Uh, the container's out of the river, I'm not sure how far it gets replaced yet at the moment, but we got footage of that further upstream from the first one. There was actually a couple of spots. I think some of the sides of the hand. Unsure. Unsure what's on it. There was a correction about that. I saw that. Thank you. 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 Thank and that massive dropout that was there, this is a sealed highway. When I came yesterday morning, it was like that when I went home last night, usable. Very good. I think as you can see, just as Diana are leaving, that how many of our contractors are out on the network at the moment? So there's about 14 different subcontractors. business so no notice of the motion for June business no June business so we'll move on and we're going to go to the the um was that in, in the end or was it this, this extra meeting and we've got other some more guests if you'd like to introduce them Greetings, gentlemen. Thank you for taking time to come and chat with us. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Councillors. Um, on my left is Peter Clark, representing PF Olsen, as well as the New Zealand Forest Owners Association. Ian Brown, representing Hikarangi Forest Farms, and Andy Costello, also Hikarangi Forest Farms, and my name is Warren. Um, from Pierre Wilson. So, councillors, the purpose of this conversation um, has been, we've been approached by a number of companies, and we've got a couple in front of us today, around how we can increase access to the forests that are up the back of Tofari Parai. So, if I use that as the general kind of marker for you, and then we can talk about the discussion from, from there as to where you guys want to go. Do you want to have a presentation you guys want to give or do you just want to talk to us? Yes, thanks. I did provide Helen with a presentation if she can put it up. It's a really simple presentation, but thank you. Have you got it, Helen? Where's your clicker? Just going through the year as we speak. Could you just turn that speaker off? Yeah. Thank you. Be oh. <coughs> gone.
We're here to talk to you about the Waimata Valley and Hokoro Road and how important that is to our, our business and our industry and potentially how important it is to you all and the community around it. So I'll, do I need to speak into that or can I? So I'm just going to hold it if you don't mind. So currently we've got a number of forests up in this area and basically all that wood and all those trucks come down Taufri Power Road to Tolaga Bay. Then from Tolaga... Right, thank you. From Tolaga they go down to the port. No, at times... We need to use the Burnside Road and the Wamata and then again down Stakes Highway 35 um, into Tolaga and then all that, those trucks all come along eastern to, uh, down the road to Eastern Port. What we have is a situation where we've got a number of forests up in this area and the option of using Hokoro Road is like, of really big importance or serious importance to us. Um, the distance between using the Taupri Paro Road or the Waimata Valley Road is 25 kilometers in distance. Of that 53 kilometers, or there's a, how many of those kilometers are on State Highway and how many of those kilometers are on Tarefati Roads. We would like very much to see this road upgraded to allow us to get from Hope Road down Waimata Valley Road and then turn right at Gray's Bush, then across to State Highway 2, and then down the back um, of Apuni Road to the port. Um, there are a whole lot of reasons for this. So I'll just ask my, my colleagues here if there's anything I'm leaving out or they'd like to add, I'd like them to, to add it. But effectively, we believe that this, having this route it will provide an alternative route, an alternative and a much more resilient route into town for us. Um, it will improve the access for all the road users, from the residents, the farmers, the, 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 the trucks, the emergency issues, and it keeps us commerce and business going if there's an alternative route. It allows business to continue. At the moment, with all these stoppages that are currently happening, we've, we've stopped ships coming into the harbour. No wood is coming into the harbour, into the port. It's affecting business. Um, we've got 22 contractors up that area of town, at least, and with 10 people each, there's 220 families that are currently not earning wages. Um, there's no access, or there was, un or there was interruption to access for emergency services. Um, as a result of not having access and not being able to get our production out, that we aren't utilizing the equipment as well as we should be. Um, and that goes all the way downstream, the value chain, all the way down to the port and the shipping companies, and that all affects us. Um, we believe that that alternative route is far less risky from a number, number of ways, and it's a lot more resilient in terms of a road. It's a ridge road, as we all know. It's harder. Um, it's not all that flash at the moment, but with a nice seal on the top, it's actually a very hard road. So there's fewer bridges. Um, there's less interaction with traffic on that road than down Taufri Road. Um, but again, it makes having that access there, it makes us significantly more resilient to issues like what we've seen in the last few weeks. It's a shorter distance. Well, it's, ultimately, it has a big impact on us. Um, because it gives us improved economics, uh, it actually results in improved efficiencies, and it actually means less trucks on the road, believe it or not. It's just because we've got to move this volume of wood, but we can do it with less trucks because we've got a shorter route. Um, at the moment, we all know of the lack of resources in our, our region and the existing questions, lack of truck drivers, lack of staff, lack of contractors. Um, and so, even though we've got to move this wood, we're trying to do it with a few amount of people, smaller number, and that makes us um, put a lot of pressure on these people, maybe unduly.
We believe that it's going to be good in terms of public nuisance and there's going to be lots of fewer trucks on the road. We're going to be interacting less with the public. Um, and the big thing for us is we actually get, we actually get around town. We're not going through town. Um, so that's a big thing for us. It's slightly more expensive going around town rather than just straight down back Ormond Road. But we believe the faster we can get to that Arapuni Road, the better for all of us. Um, the road quality. With, if we can upgrade that road a bit, we allow those 50 ton trucks to go in, which is a, about a 10% improvement in terms of payload. Okay. Again, it, it's good for us in terms of economics, but it's also good for everyone because it's reduced the amount of trucks on the road. Um, again, reduced pressure on people. We do acknowledge that there are significant impacts to those users of the, on that road and those people along that road. One with our Valley Road, there are a lot of people living along the road and we acknowledge that we're going to be causing them some problems. We're pretty confident that the company can work with that and find a solution for those people if we need to. Um, obviously, there's some neighbours and public along the new route that we're proposing to go around town that may be used to a lot quieter towns we're going to have to deal with. Um, and obviously, people are going to have to learn to manage that increased traffic along these new routes that we're proposing. Um, I'm sure there's a whole lot of more comments, so I'm going to give each of the team behind there an opportunity to talk to you as well. But I'll just finish off. Um, so previously, we provided a lot of information to council about what wood resources and what forests are up in that area. T today, I haven't listed them all, but I have shown a number of them that we are currently either harvesting or just about to harvest. And it's really just to try and demonstrate some of the things I've said. Um, and so this forest is... Rangi Forest, Palma Forest. This forest is uh, Forest Enterprises Forest. Forest Enterprises could unfortunately not be here today, um, but I've included their numbers here. And we, the three of Olsen, we manage on behalf of these owners, these three forests, including South Reef Kapara Farms Limited. So in terms of, it's just trying to illustrate some of the numbers of included the volumes of wood that have to be harvested and transported and produced from each of those farms and forests. I've then translated it into loads in terms of truck loads that have to come out of that forest. Um, that's or the number of loads that are going to come out per year. And that's the number of loads that are going to come out per day out of those forests. They're currently coming out, but they're coming out Tafu Paro Road. Okay. So just going Council, I met sure. down there how many hay we stop up moving on for the day. Is that not included in one time? Oh that's just yes, it's hundred percent. So it's going empty and then ninety one full loads, so it's hundred and eighty trucks. Plus obviously all the crew vehicles, the metal trucks, the whole lot. So if these trucks were on Tafri Road, um we would need 39 trucks, for example. But if we were allowed to use Waimata Valley Road and we were able to, just in terms of distance, we'd probably be saving 25% and we'd have 25% less trucks on the road. Okay, the number of trucks. The oh, loads will be. Using no, this is just saving. So the truck can do three trips oh, okay. instead of two trips. So the same amount of wood can be moved with fewer trucks. However, if that road was upgraded to allow 50 ton trucks, there'd be a further 10% saving on that. Sorry, so that's just related to distance. Or on the other thing, sorry, I'll stop it or the other forest you can't see in there is Earnslaw One at the moment with Arakihi. They are about to come out onto Hokoroa as well. So with the issues we have at Arakihi, the only way they're gonna get out in the sort of medium term is they're going to punch a road through to come out of Hokoroa as well. 
I think they've already started that and they've been working with Forest Enterprises on an internal road that'll bring them out on Hokuroa anyway. So they're coming onto Hokuroa. At the moment, they have to come down Tofari Parai, but they've already got their internal roads coming out onto Hokuroa to then come down Tofari already, just due to the state of Arakehi. My, my maths isn't all that good, but I think this is about 3.2 million tonnes over the next period that has to come down that road. There are other companies that aren't here today, but you know, if we had to include their forests, it would be, you know, there's a couple of, of controlled forest services for us up here. There's Earnsville One, there's Toms is operating up here. Um, and ultimately this vo volume is probably in the region of five to six million tons instead of the 3.2 that I've spoken here. So you can almost double that potentially. With the numbers you, you're giving to us now, wouldn't it make sense to use both routes? What you were saying is that you want to go down the Hokaroa and come down Waimata Valley. Um, wouldn't it just be fair on the roads and the people that live on those roads that you would use both roads equally? I, I think we, and I'm being a little bit selfish here because I drew this, this awesome picture. So this is our forest and those numbers are based on our forest. So for, for this forest, it makes a whole lot of sense to come this way. Yeah. For this one, even more sense. Yep. And as we go further away, this, the, the saving for those forests is only nine kilometers. So they're forests that are here and here, they probably would be in their best interest to keep going down Taufri. But then I've just got a supplementary question to that. Why have you not been using the Okaroa? Is it not um, up to scratch? Well, in terms of its carriage width, and there's some nasty corners that you actually can't safely oh. travel on that road. We do use it for small vehicles, but we can't. And actually, at this time, they have been going to taking trucks up empty up that route, um, but they're not taking fully laden trucks down that road at the moment. So, I, yes. It's good to see you suggesting going out to State Highway 2. So, that's where you enter. Where do you exit? Oh, Malcolm, what we will do is we'll come down State Highway 2. Yep. There are a couple of options. Either we go straight down to Makaraka and then turn right. Okay. Yep. And then get to Johnny Stockman and turn Two left left. onto Queen. Yep. Sorry, yes, right and then left. Or alternatively, there's an option of going a little bit further along back or back woman and then cutting across and then going down Bushmere um, and coming out just, just, just above. Thank you. Yeah, so um, this will be a, a continuous route. You're looking at this for a long term. Well, we're looking at it for at least the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's but, continuous but, but enough. Sub yeah. Subsequent no, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, personally, I've, I've always thought that this would be the, a better route for forestry to come down. It alleviates um, State Highway 35 coming through Wainui and through the residential areas. Um, to getting into the port. So it just puts everything into a more of a load into that Awapuni area. Um, the other question is, would you have storage and um, scaling facilities at Awapuni so you could manage the flow going into the port? Just Instead just of it going directly from there to the port, would you have, could you um, incorporate a storage facility at Awapuni so you could facilitate the, the um, flow to the port and control that? So if, if sorry, if I may answer that, um, from a, um, a Hikarangi point of view, we have the Optilog facility at the end of Dunstan Road. Uh, so all our traffic would actually go to, to the Optilog and be scaled or converted and scaled there and then transported through to the port. Yep. Um, the other question I would have, um, um, the expense of upgrading this road to cater for that and um, would there be forestry contribution towards that? I, I'm Pete Clark, I'll have a crack at that. Um, look, we, we've always been very, very concerned about the um, the funding for Tairawhiti Roads, and uh, I think we're on the same page that it's just not making sense at the current ratios from uh, of 67, 33%, so I think that needs to be addressed. And the, the short-term way to address that is uh, through the regional billion-dollar fund, um, I'm aware Ming Fun has put in an application, I think 100 million for that, and that's 
uh, that's going through process. Now I rang Shane Jones this morning to uh, try and figure out where that's at. He said, look, uh, it's got to have full cabinet, cabinet approval and it may not be the full amount. NZTA will have a, a say in that. So we'd like to get in the scrum with you guys and, uh, and unblock any blockages uh, for that. I mean, really it's unfair. We see, we see roads in other parts of the country uh, being sealed that are perfectly good, resealed, that are perfectly good sealed roads while we're you know, getting bogged down in mud in, in the roads around here. And, and it's simply not working for this district at the current, the current arrangement. It's gotta be fixed. And we've got a government now, I think that is um, sympathetic to that idea. Um, in terms of your question of the forest industry pain, I mean, the economics of this does make sense if it comes down to that. But at the end of the day, um, forestry is not the only user of these roads and, and forestry, uh, you know, putting the events of the last week aside is a, a significant economic contributor to the region. And we think that public roads are part of an essential infrastructure. That's our, that's our basic story, but let's work together to get sufficient funding, not just for this road, but for all the rural roads here, it's just not working. Dave, the other day you gave us a presentation in terms of the <coughs> condition of both the Arakirihi and Hokuroa Road. Have you any idea at this stage, or has Dave got any idea what it's going to cost to upgrade them? To we, I mean, there's, there's, you just said how narrow it is, and you in parts of Arakirihi the other day how dangerous it was with those dropouts. So to fix that, how long and how much? So through the chair, the Arakihi Road, Taufari Padai, all of the ones that are out at the moment, we've got still assessments been happening on those roads. We're still waiting for the helicopters to get back to give us assessments on how we're going to open these roads and what it is that we're going to do. We haven't done anything on this proposal to date because we wanted it to come through the committee before we were going to look at progressing anything because it's outside of what we've talked about. So. The companies, when they came to us as staff, we said, yes, we can understand what it is. We've commissioned a report to look at the costs and what would need to be done from an engineering perspective so that we have an unbiased view of how much this could cost if it's something that we want to proceed with, but it's outside our mandate, hence why it's, we've advised the companies to come here today to talk to you, um, and then we can go forward from there if you choose us to, but it's something that we didn't want to do without having committee knowledge that we were doing it and come and say, surprise, we've done a deal and this is all done. So that's hence why it's been brought here today. We also know we haven't given you papers on this yet as well. So supplementary to that, Mr. Chairman, are you saying that uh, both roads are not usable commercially at this point in time? Through the chair, I'm not prepared to say how long they'll be down for at this stage. We need to work through and understand completely what they are. We've got a meeting this afternoon with the forestry companies around the state of the roads and how it is that we're going to facilitate truck movements at this stage, but we haven't, we haven't had those conversations. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen, for coming and bringing that to us. Um, and I, I just have to um, note a word of caution from the residents of the Waimata Valley because it is in my ward. And going back some time ago, that the top of Toka Raw Road was never upgraded because it was intended to keep the log trucks coming down Tauti Parai. It's not that it, I'm suggesting it would be unachievable, but we will have some resistance to another 180 log truck movements on that road in a day. Can I just ask Mr Wilson though, what is the length of Toka Raw that's not upgraded? Because I'm aware of where we go to with the tar seal. Through the chair, there's multiple issues on Hokuroa if we were going to enable heavies through it. There's about an 8K section, Dave, with different things that need to be done, whether it be some site benching. There's also um, Warwick Wilshire I mentioned the gradient on one of the roads. So there's some sections in through where we all know that tight section, as you refer to, Councillor Seymour, that was left back in those days. So that needs to be done. Plus, there are also other upgrades that we're currently doing on Hokuroa to enable Olsen and other companies to be able to access Taufari Parai. So part of the issue we have at the top in there with Hokuroa is just how narrow it is. And we've been working around how they can just get down to Taufari to be able to get out through Hokuroa because mm. there's site benching, there's issues with um, how soft the road is. So we have been doing some upgrades just to get out up to about the 9K mark we're about now, Warren, around how we're pulling those things out. So there's a range of issues that need to be 
told to us by the engineer's scope so that we know the full scale of that work before we can bring you a proposal around what it looks like. But I see, I do see the value in what you're suggesting for the time-wise and the reduction of units, but we just have to remember our community and, and work with them as well. You agree, Councillor Singh? Well, I can't under, under um, play though the value of this resilience. If it wasn't for the, the bridges um, down to Alfred Park, it could be something else. I mean, basically there's it, there's a couple of sections there across quite big mud flow, you know, side, side um, really high maintenance to try and uh, keep those sections open. And if we can get on a ridge road, uh, it's just going to be more resilient. Yeah, appreciate all of that. Thank you. But I'll just add that, that a lot of the wood that is currently coming down from Tolaga on the coast road goes through town and then to storage. So there's a, you know, going around town through this route that we're suggesting that it actually might reduce the total number of trucks going through town as well that go to Optilog as well as to the Dunstan Road or, or storage. Thanks. I just had one question that would um, carry on from what Councillor Seymour was saying. It, it absolutely makes sense what you're saying here, but we have to take more into account, um, or our community into account as well. So what I want to ask of David, or all aspects of our community into account, business, livability, all those factors. One thing I want to ask, um, in conditions like these where we're considering upgrading roads to possibly accommodate forestry or um, working with our communities, do we go out and talk to say like the Waimata Valley owners, um, what weight does their input have on decisions like these? So through the chair, if we were looking to take this any further, we would be consulting with our community around a change like this. This, this would be a big change to that community. And um, we need to consult with them to hear their views. The, Weight as the consideration, of course, is yours to make um, when the decision comes back to you how we proceed with that. But the first steps are around, is it feasible, the cost for it, then take those to the community, in particular the community they're going to be affected by this. The second part is that this does tie into the network optimization. So that's the heavy vehicle process that we're looking to start um, from 1st of July. And that's another one that needs to be consulted with the community around where those priorities are. As Warren said, there are multiple options for coming through the Poverty Bay Flats. All of those have got big implications for those residents, but it's also part of that wider picture of what we need to do with that network optimisation plan. Yes, and just to follow up, I mean, there will be some discussions and compromises that we can arrive at, because Mr Wilson has heard the issue of engine brakes and all the bits and pieces that are the issues that are raised at our community meeting. So if we can give the community some assurance that we can potentially manage some of those uh, side effects, then they're likely to be far more accepting of it. Thank you. So um, that would alleviate trucks going down Ormond Road at this particular stage as well, going into the port via the um, Esplanade? Yeah. Through the chair's staff, we would want to bring a consideration back around, we would not as staff recommend putting that volume of traffic down Ormond Road. It'd be yeah. something that we would, would not recommend. So it's why when we were approached initially, it was, well, we'd have to look at an alternative mm -hmm. as a state, and hence why we talked about State Highway 2 as being the way to access the other side and that was part of before the forestry companies came around that heavy vehicle route that we've been talking about and how we would use the bylaw to enforce that so it would be something that would have to be put through a bylaw through the through the current bylaw that we have to make sure that it was stuck to around making sure that heavies weren't using Ormond Road as part of that and that'd be part of the discussion with the community and with the industry that we would have to work through. So we have brought this to you at a very early stage so that you're aware of it and there are some things that we can work through. Um, but it was more raising it on your radar that the discussions are being had, so you're not surprised, but there are options that we can work through and bring those back to this committee and to council, of course. So supplementary to that, this, this will um, totally influence the, um, the outcome of the Inner Harbour Access Project as well. Through the Chair, this is consistent with the Inner Harbour Access Project, so we have discussed the effects of this with NZTA. In particular, it does take out the um, 
elimination of needing to turn left onto Wainui Road by the Gladstone Road Bridge there, sorry, and then turning right again because it would be a free flow of traffic for trucks in and out because they would be coming down State Highway, so it would actually change those vehicle movements for the better. But we shouldn't think that that would be, every, I mean, it's not going to be every forest. I mean, there are forests beyond there that will still be coming down State Highway 35, won't they? So through the chair, it would only be the ones in this vicinity for this, which is where large volumes, there will still definitely be trucks coming down through State Highway 35. Right, any, any other questions or comments? Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Um, it's um, certainly something we're going to have to have a, a good look at because, it, it, you know, there are, it's, it makes some sense. I know there'll be... There's, there's give and takes with neighbourhoods all around the district. One person, and it's a fact of life that, you know, if you move away from one, there's going to be another one affected. So that's going to be a discussion we'll have to have as well. Um, so thank you for coming, and no doubt there'll be, we'll hear more about this as time goes on. Mm. Right. I'll, I'll, bring, I'll, bring, I'll, bring, I'll bring this one up because the police are here for that this evening. I think. Yeah. Right, if the, if the committee wouldn't m mind, that was just a, was that a, that wasn't actually a paper, was it? Or, no, that was just a. Correct. We've had the discussion, we've had the discussion before the meeting with regard to whether um, it, should have been held in public, and there, there just wasn't enough justification to hold that in public, uh, excluded, so we decided we'd be upfront with it. And so, yes, correct. Through the chair, we discussed that with the forestry companies before they came, and it was only to be excluded if they were going to give away some of the commercial sensitivity, which they obviously, as you can see from the presentation, chose to remove. I talked to them beforehand to remind them that we were going to do it in the public, and they were fine with that as a change around it. Right. Okay. Uh, right. uh, Anyhow, yeah, well, let's see it. Council Stoltz. Um, can I make a comment absolutely following on what Councillor Seymour just said? There's the possibility that Mr. Jones is watching. Mr. Jones, we look at you, is watching from his office. <laughs> Mr. Wrigley Winsley, we're watching you. And that they are watching right now, and it can be on the Gisborne Herald website. Um, tonight. So can we make an effort to make sure we communicate that properly to maybe give some pointers to the media on what we're planning to do so that that community doesn't read a, a big highlight tomorrow? Um, oh, there we are. Oh, there we are. Um, but that's what we're saying, that, the, that we um, make a proper job of the consultation and the communication with the community so that it doesn't blast up and um, we're not even going to be doing that. So, this is, can I reassure the committee, this was brought to us and we are uncomfortable as staff to progress anything further until we have direction from council and committee because of the sensitivity of what's being proposed. We have deliberately brought this here for the forestry companies to tell you what it is that they are doing so that we can work through a process around what that is. At this stage, they have floated the idea that they would like to come down Waimata. Our advice is we need to understand the full impacts of that a lot further than what we currently do in order to be able to give you any type of decision paper or anything for you to take any further forward. They know that we don't have a decision paper. They also know that you weren't going to be briefed and that we hadn't had time to pull a paper together, but they chose to come to you now to discuss this. It's a public deputation. We have a lot of things that we need to work through before we can give you any recommendation, not just cost, but community impact, social impact, welfare, e environmental impact. There's a range of issues with what's being proposed that needs to be worked through in a lot of detail. So we're going to start doing that, but we, they wanted to let it be raised because they want this now, because they want their forest to come out now, and that's their business prerogative to get it out. Our job is to give you advice on all the other things that sit in and around there. I mean, because while we've had this sort of discussion a long time ago, it was never 
the reason for not upgrading the top of that road was so the trucks got onto the state highway sooner and the maintenance cost fell to NZTA right. as opposed to falling to the ratepayer. And that was always the reason, wasn't it? Going back. Okay, yeah. let's let's yeah. Okay, thank you for that. We'll, we'll um. There's, and I'm going to I'm going to sort of finish with a comment here. I'm, there was a proposal put to us, and I'm sure the people of Waimata would rather know at the very onset of that proposal rather than us going away and doing a whole lot of work and coming up to them with something that's three quarters done and then before they knew about it. So if I was someone at Waimata, no, I'm just on this is a closing statement, you've spoken three times. If I was a resident of Waimata, I would be happy uh, to know now, as it, as it sits now, at the very onset, they, they, they might have things to say and that's one of the things that we'll have to address as time goes on with, with part of the public consultation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on. And if the committee um, is okay, I'm going to bring the last item on page 91 to 93 um, uh, up ahead of schedule, because I see we've got some guests here from the New Zealand Police. And, and I think, are you wanting to speak to this or be in, if you'd like to just come up, up here and sit. So, Mm. Greetings. Um, would you like to introduce the, the, the subject? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Is yeah. That? Uh, kia ora everyone. Um, I think you all know who I am, but I just want to take this opportunity to introduce you to Rob Booty. Oh, kia ora everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's Sergeant Rob Booty. Um, Obviously in the police, uh, my position is uh, Tara Fiti, Iwi Laysan Coordinator. Um, I'll, I'll, just from my boundary, uh, it's from Mohaka in the south right through to Kotaka, out to Waikari Moana, so uh, that's my area. Uh, so, Council, uh, the purpose of the report was just to inform Council around Whakamana here, the sort of a strength driver program, um, and what we are doing in the community to reduce the risk of drinking and driving. Um, so, just to highlight um, a little bit of um, the issues around that, I've uh, prepared a little video for you all. Let's see. <laughs> but. Um, while we wait for that, I'm sure um, Rob can talk yep. to that. Okay, so just while waiting for the video, um, this program that we've got called Fokkaman here, uh, we've taken it from uh, another district, the Rotorua district, um, uh, which is where we was based. Uh, and it really is about addressing uh, recidivist drink drivers. So the majority of our people that come onto this one day wānanga uh, are a third, third recidivist, so they've been caught three times. Um, yesterday we had our uh, program, we had 24 on there, majority of those were third time offenders, so we're not dealing with those that have just get caught overnight, uh, we're getting those that have a, a long history of it. We had, I think it was a 60 year old female that was on there, had been caught seven times um, over her um, life I suppose, so we're addressing this program for those that are. It's not me talking. We're addressing this program for So I'll provide, the, provide a narrative, I suppose. That last clip was at Fo um, Rhythm and Vines, which is probably where you see most of us. Dean Plowman there is talking about the...
So I'll carry on. So what he's saying is the incidence of Māori males. And um, you're going away with a whole lot of um, uh, tools, I suppose, to, to help them out when they get to that stage where they're having a, having a drink um, and what to do about it in terms of getting home safely and keeping their roads safe. So currently we have the highest rates of drink driving uh, per capita for our yeah, well, you all know, know that. Um, so our next step from here is to uh, take it into our high schools. So we want to be capturing those year 11s, uh, year 12s, and we're going to do that alongside um, the KED team. So they're currently already in high schools, and um, so we're developing that program for the schools. Um, Just in terms of uh, stakeholders, uh, obviously tied up with your Rose Police, um, alcohol community, uh, community addiction services, corrections. So the people that we are come onto the, are pulled from the corrections basket. So they're the ones that get, say, 80 hours community service. They come onto our program, spend a day with us, 80 hours gets taken off their community service. So they're the ones, they're the, they are from their pool. The majority that come on are from their pool. Um, funeral directors, Evans uh, stakeholder, uh, ambulance, fire service, um, ACC were assisting us for some stage too. So yeah, it's a it's, um, flexible stakeholder group. We've brought the ambulance on recently, um, but uh, as a team, and it's a team effort to get the day sorted and to everyone present, uh, it's pretty, pretty successful. I think we've had a 98% success rate so far. Six courses uh, since February last year. Um, so we're watching that and hopefully, you know, it's a bit early to say um, and we're not clapping ourselves on the back yet, but um, we're hoping that in a year's time, we, that, that rate in the 90s is our goal to keep that rate high. So the uh, focus is on the day, but it's also working with corrections to ensure that those that come on the course stay away from driving a car whilst drinking. I'll have to congratulate you on starting this program. I think it's fantastic. You know, you know um, efforts in trying to control the situation in the past just haven't worked, and this seems a very logical way to deal with it, uh, getting rid of the behaviour rather than just trying to uh, uh, clean up after the behaviour. So, well done. Right, any others? 
Well, thank you very much for your attendance here today, and it's, 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 yeah, it's great to see. And yeah, so, so we're going to move. be moved by Councillor Burdett, second, second by Councillor Foster. All in favour? Uh, against? Carried. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. So now we need to go back to page 11. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to page 11. There's nothing else here, Wayne. Yeah, yeah, right. It wouldn't be right. It won't take long. Please do. Just one more bit. I see the head notes there. Mm -hmm. And we'll try and not go through that. So we just take it this one. Yep. Okay. You will read it, no doubt, and so I'll, I'll get Dave to have a, have a chat about it. I've already had a bit of a discussion with it, and it, there'll be points that we need to take into consideration. So, would you like to? Yes, thing. I'll, I'll take the report as read. The only thing I'll, I'll add is this was a follow-on from this morning's meeting with the investments and the technical audit. So one of them was asking why um, we just have to start using paperwork that we have to pull out from now on. And, so that, and that's around the capital spends. Okay, so just reinforce again, things like um, new projects like Barker's, take points at Barker's Hill, that went through a safety audit because it's something totally new and, and part of it. But where we're really going to be asking for the exemptions is things like heavy metalling, chip sealing, and rehab. So project take points at Gladstone Road, we would have had to fill out an, an exemption form. What we did is we just replaced like with like. Okay, so um, if we were looking at um, doing some major changes to the intersection at the same time, we would have then we would have brought in a, a safety audit team. Okay, so that's the, so for the purposes of 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 ticking the boxes, this, we just have to make sure the form is, is ticked, and that's what this paper is here. Right, I when I first saw um, the request for delegations, I sort of I, I thought, well, I'm, I'd like to get more in-depth knowledge before we sort of moved on with that. And I'm, I'm sort of comfortable now that it is really an operational delegation and, and, and it is quite fitting. So I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with it. At the same time, I've been assured that if, you, if, if you're not comfortable with it, we can we can operate without it, but it, 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 things will take a bit longer than that. So, yep. Moved by Councillor Foster, second by Councillor McCain. Is there any other discussion with this? Because this is the appropriate place to raise it rather than as it was raised briefly this morning, I do want to raise again the safety audit aspect. Um, um, Mr. Hadfield touched base with me at lunchtime, but I just think, you know, we, here on page 11 talks about road safety audit uh, file for new capital projects, and I'm still on about um, the land around Emirau on State Highway 35, just north of Tolliga, and that um, <coughs> north of Tongara, quite steep drain. And so we just need to make sure that new work doesn't create a greater um, danger, particularly in wet weather, for our travelling public. I just want that noted, thank you. We're all good with that, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any other comments or questions? <coughs> Can I just um, ask one question of, of you, Dave? Um, the work that was identified in the in the full audit, like this is part of the full audit, isn't it? Is that mostly covered off in our in our ITPP? Like most of that work, like are there going to be costs above and beyond what we expected anyhow, or is is what we've got in our ITPP would that cover most of the work that we've been asked to consider? Yeah, to confirm that, that's why um, we we. Uh, categorised into corridors like a length of road, and that length of road would have had to be upgraded, and that would just require a safety audit. Yes, it would. Yeah, because it's it's it's, it's not a like we're going to be putting metal on the road. It's actually a full upgrade. So yes. that would be a capital project. Yes, and that would come under the road safety audit process. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Well, so 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 basically, what we're budgeted for in the ten-year plan covers off. Yes, that's fine. That's that's all good. Okay. Any other questions, or someone happy to move the report? Here we go. Okay, oh, we've got to move a second. Okay, all in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Right, we'll go to page 56.
Mr. Chairman, I've got some questions. I was in if when I was 57, okay. and a paper going on from 57. Okay. And while I don't want the absolute answer, um, with respect to the comment under I says 57 assets and infrastructure in the second paragraph that um, we are short of um, staff, have we analysed, or first paragraph, I beg your pardon, in the second um, part of that paragraph, a number of key vacancies? And I don't want to know the reason, but I just want to have confidence that the organisation has analysed why we lost a number of key staff in quite a critical time frame. So, I mean, for your for management's benefit. Through the chair, yes, we've sat down with each of those staff members and they've had their exit interviews. We know most of them, they've all left for personal reasons and they've left the district. So moving closer to family, moving overseas to be closer to family, those things. So we have understood why they've left. It was unfortunate they all left as quickly as they did, but we have been looking to replace them and we've replaced some already. Thank you. Hi, we, yeah, yeah, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Look, and just in certain areas, um, there is the, the term used that um, expenditure has been liberally suppressed to achieve an overall council saving, you know, it's the mid-end of the year budget. Um, I, it, it just seems that if there was an opportunity to suppress the expenditure, that you would always do that. Um, but I just wondered whether um, that's at the expense of what? Uh, the work not being completed because elsewhere it does say that you expect to have most capital works except for the Wainaki uh, pipeline uh, finished and there's a few other minor projects and perhaps adding to that there are a few projects like uh, there's some work on bridges and this is before we we're talking about this latest um, storm damage but uh, it wasn't going to be uh, done uh, by year end so were those amounts, um, I think the expression again uh, used there was a, a bit controversial about what the money's going to be looked for in the, the next year's budget. So there's a bit to explain about that, please. So through the chair, that's primarily in the wastewater and stormwater budgets where we have the underspends that some are deliberate, knowing that the finances for council had to be brought back. We didn't proceed with some of the projects that we were going to in order to make sure that we didn't exceed the overall budgets that we were looking at. The projects that we've deferred capital works ones, as you say, Councillor, uh, around where we haven't been able to do those capital work programs that have gone through on those. The magnitude for those is around three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of work that we have to have that we have put off until next year so that we didn't blow our operational budgets as we would have if we had carried on with that work. So it was trying to manage the overall costs of the council, and those were works that were seen that we could push over one more year and pick them up there. Supplementary to that, Mr Chairman. Well, uh, we've already set the budgets for next year, So, you're, and the wording was, we're going to look for funds for that. Well, does that mean we're going to add on to what's already in our budget? So the way that we've worked it is with the assets, we manage the assets per year with the funds that we have. So we've got the funding that we have for next financial year. We'll reprioritise those projects oh, into oh, there. And so there's some one on, one off. Good. Thank you. Um, just um, page 79 um, under activity summary. Um, it's just a, a sentence in the first paragraph on operational. Additional unplanned sump and grate cleaning was undertaken in the CBD area due to increase in observed ponding issues. And I, I actually bought a lot, I had a lot of complaints from retailers in town about the lack of, of cleaning in the gutters over the city period. And um, you know, that caused, when we did have rain, um, blockages and, um, and ponding. So, I mean, normally that, that would be done regularly. And um, there was a really noticeable decline in the amount amount of times that the cleaning of the gutters was done in the city centre for some reason over that Christmas period in particular and, and um, latter in, in January. Um, and I diverted the people to go to request for service. Um, so, but yeah, I, it was, um, it was a, I had quite a lot of retailers coming to me about that issue. So um, one would hope it wouldn't continue. <laughs> and that's hence, the, you know, it's all maintenance. If you don't do that, then you've got these ponding and um, increased um, ponding issues and flooding issues in the drainage. Through the chair, one of the things we've done is we've reallocated the responsibility for those stormwater 
um, drains in town, they now sit back within the utilities department, so hence why it's hitting the utilities budgets and why we've made mention of it. So the stormwater team are more focused on stormwater, so it's sitting with them and there's a regular maintenance schedule that we're working with our contractors to make sure that they are having the regular routine maintenance is happening as a priority for our stormwater system going forward. Okay, any other questions, Councillor Seymour? Thank you, page 63, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to know, it seems to me if I do the sums, we've got about 23,000 left of the money that was available for property acquisition with respect to the Waipa River flood um, stock bank project. Is that going to be enough um, to cover the projected three further purchases is the first part of the question. Yeah. Sorry, Chair, I'll just refer to Mr. Dakin. Can you repeat the question? Oh, sure. Um, we say in this paper that we've got 23,000 left of the projected budget that we had available for the land purchase for the Wi-Fi stock um, upgrade or Wi-Fi flood control stock banks. But um, is that going to be enough? Because we were also told in the same paper there's still three properties that we're negotiating on. Is that going to cover the potential cost? I'll have to come back and clarify that. Um, Joss has been managing that, so I'll, I'll come back with that clarification. Right, thank you. So that's page 63 of the current agenda. Thank you. Um, we seem to have spent 130% of the current year's budget on that project anyway, which is not part of that capital. So this is the operational part from what I'm reading from this. And the second part of that question, it says the hearings plan to be held in August, September. So is that still a time frame that's going to be met? So through the chair, the current financial position is showing at 130%. However, earlier on in this financial year, we requested funds to be brought forward from next year to, in order for us to be able to purchase the properties that we had there as well. So we've brought money forward for us to be able to undertake those works the way that the system, it doesn't redo that from the annual plan. So that's on the annual plan budget. However, you approved us having additional budget for the project for this financial year because we needed it. So it's just a glitch in the reporting. The, at the moment, we're, we're still working through the resource consent process um, and we haven't got an update for the committee on that at this stage. So do you, do you have any knowledge then if the 23K is going to be enough for capital purchase or will we be needing to add to that? Through the chair, I will want to make sure I can confirm the answer before I give that to you. Right, thank you. Can, can I, I've just got a couple of other um, questions moving through. And that's with respect to walking and cycling, page 64. And the last um, large paragraph on that page, it talks about the cycleways fund um, for Brittany Road Cycleway and approximately 2.5 million of their funding for that is coming from the urban cycleways. And it goes on to say, which we can all read, is that current information or was there to be um, some delay in that so that we only dug the road up once and we didn't put it on one side and then another, whereas this seems to be material that we've had for some time? Um, that's current. So the project's been delayed. So that money, um, yeah, that is the current funding available. Sorry, the project is delayed because the current is not available. No, it is available, sorry. So not, um, both hardly any money has been spent on that project today. But I thought with some discussion about we might um, look to do the whole job once rather than potentially twice. Yeah, we are. So the cycleway we built, um, on the opposite side of the road to what the utility work's been done. Right. Okay. I'm sure that will be reported in more detail to another committee. Can um, I move on to, to water management to options on page 65? Can, 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 can I just get um, Mr. Wilson to just further elaborate on that? So my apologies, Chair, this isn't one of my projects, okay. um, walking in cycleways. That's one that Mr. White looks after, so we'll get it paper put back to this committee around what's happening with that cycle way, if that's okay. Sorry, it's just not one of my ones. Right, thank you. 
Um, this just relates to a comment I also made this morning on page 65 with respect to wastewater management options, and it talks about um, community consultation taking place with more planned in the LTP process. Well, the LTP process is now several months old, and so that paper clearly hasn't been um, updated. And um, if I move to page 67 and on my hot topic of weeds in our environment, and uh, campus, which there was some discussion last week, I believe, at regional transport, and at least um, NZTA claim that they're going to do something about campus in, on the state highway network uh, was to be this month or next month. I see we're going to target it over the next 12 months. It is becoming a really significant invasive weed in this community that we never had here before. So could we have a report on exactly what is going to be done about targeting campus to meet our requirements of the regional man case management plan, a proper report so we actually can understand and then measure progress against that because we introduced a plan. We did give Brodie a year of grace, if I recall, at the hearing to um, be unable to fund some work in that area, but campus is just appearing everywhere on our road sites, and it's not in parcel, um, parcel farmers' paddocks, and we do not want to see our district become so weed infested. Just uh, through the chair, um, we've spoken with Lois Easton and the an environmental team, and so she's given us the target for campus, what we um, will target over the next next year, and that includes actually putting spray uh, dye in, into the spray. That's what they do in other areas, so you can actually see well, what pampers has been sprayed. So we'll get to that process, but and so we've got contractors on the way, and that'll start certainly on the state highway. There's funding there for this for next year. Yes, I understand yeah. that, but I'd like to know that if some was going to happen in three months and six months, otherwise we, will, you know, we are contributing to a spread of a weed in our local environment, which is just not really good enough. Yeah. Thank you. That'll probably do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Councillor Dunn. Yeah. First, and then Councillor um, Yeah, page 62, it says a review of outstanding notices to remove downpipes from the gully traps. Can you give us any idea of how many there are? Outstanding notices? Neville, I'll pass that to you. How many outstanding notices you have for the downpipes? Oh, okay, so they haven't been issued. So the actual notices haven't been issued, so the outstanding, those are outstanding at this stage. What we are focusing on at the moment is just the legal process that we need to go to, through in terms of making sure those notices are correctly. Thank you. Sorry, I read it the wrong way. I thought they'd already been issued and you're following them up. Um, and then the other question was page 86. I'm just wondering if you could explain to me what the, um, it's the wastewater system and adequacy, the number of dry weather sewer overflows from the Territorial Authority's sewage system expressed per 1,000 sewage connections. Um, why don't we just have a number of dry weather overflows? Why is it written in such a silly way? This is um, the national performance measures that are measured across the whole New Zealand. So they have one parameter, so it's actually based on compulsory measures that we have to report on. So supplementary to Councillor Dunn's question, then is it possible to tell us, I think we've had three in the last 10 days, what did that do to the figure for the next period? Just so we get an un we understand, because we don't know what it means per 1,000. Through the chair, those are wet weather overflows, not dry weather overflows. So wet weather overflows are not they're very different. It's the next one down. The dry weather is where it's a blockage, where yes, it's not no, due to yeah. a rain event. Well, so it will oh, be. Councillor Burdett. Thank you, Chairman. Debate. Yeah. Page 67. Yeah. Waimatini Road uh, project will not be completed this year due to issues with the resource consent. What exactly does that mean? What it says? Yeah. You know how urgent that is. And then. Uh, we go further to page 72, the regulatory flood protection, provide a means of holding slowing down erosion. Um, the, cop, the bottom comment there is ratepayer funding from 2018-19 onwards has been withdrawn during <clears throat> 2018-28 long-term plan project prioritization process. 
Does that mean no funds have been allocated, whatever, to this project? Given the urgency, Yeah, there was um, $10,000 per annum for sort of um, minor works on that scheme. And then during the project prioritization uh, phase of the LTP, that was removed. How much did it cost you to do? It was only $10,000 per annum um, for any minor works and repairs to the, any dolos or tree work in that, <coughs> in that scheme area. Through you, Mr. Chairman. I had a uh, statement from the CEO that there would be adequate resources applied, to, given that we firstly have uh, an erosion program there in terms of the planting with MPI. There are dollars sitting in Headley's yard to go into the river for riverbank protection. All that's going to cost money. And $10,000 per year over the next 10 years, there's no press, oh, sorry, who's press, is not sufficient. It's Good. urgent. It needs the dressing. Through the chair, we have budget within the Land Rivers and Coastal team budget to be able to look after the scheme should we need to. The $10,000 that we were putting aside was going to be targeting the ratepayers there. It's something as part of our works that we're able to take on as part of our existing budgets, given it's not taking very much work for it to go through. And if we did have a big issue, we'd be reprioritising our operational budgets to accommodate it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Any other comments, thoughts, or questions? Okay, well, fairly comprehensive report, and I think everybody's got a fairly clear idea where we're going. I'll, I'll move it. It's second by Councillor Burdett. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Yeah. So that's, that's us for, the, for today. Thank you, folks. Um, mm.